Welcome to the June 17th meeting of the City Council's Finance Committee. I, I am City Councilor Stan Moulton, and in the absence of Councilor Maori, I am presiding at this virtual meeting that is being audio and video recorded. Laura, would you call the roll, please? Okay, Councilor Moulton. Here. Uh, Councilor Elkins. Here. And Councillor Labarge. Here. And we know Councillor Maori is not present, but you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we will begin with public comment, but before we do that, I wanna make sure everyone who is listening uh, understands that uh, our, our uh, task today is to uh, issue a recommendation on a procedural order whether or not to place a proposition two and a half override on the November 2024 ballot. This is not a recommendation about approving or disapproving the override. It is merely a procedural order. So with that said, uh, uh, we'll begin with public comment. Anybody who wishes to make a public comment may raise their virtual hand uh, if you're having, which is on the, uh, on the Zoom toolbar, if you have trouble doing that, you may raise your physical hand. I will recognize you and you will be asked to unmute. And uh, if you could direct your comment or question to the finance committee uh, and limit your comments to two minutes and please state your name. Uh, Council Labarge, you, you are having a visual problem. Yeah, the top part, Stan. Yes. It has my name, Laura's picture, yours, Marissa's, Debbie's, and Chardine is blank anyways. Yes. Up before, it was a whole bar. Now I only got a half. Uh, well, Counselor, I, I, it, you need to be on gallery view. I am I am seeing, oh. seeing all, all the boxes. Uh, if, you can, if you can adjust your gallery view, uh, that might help you. Uh, but you're hearing you're hearing the discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm that... hearing. Okay, so back to back to public comment. Please state begin by stating your name and place of residence. Uh, is there anyone here who wishes to make public comment? I, I see no hands. Laura, do you see any anybody? No. Okay, then we will go on to. We have no minutes to deal with today. So our one order of business is the order, and I'm gonna read the order, order uh, 24094, in order to place $3 million operating override on the November 5th, 2024 state election ballot. Order that notice be sent to the state elections division for an override question to be placed on the 2024 state election ballot to be held in Northampton on November 5th, 2024, pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 59, Section 21C, Subsection G. The question, if it is placed on the on the ballot, shall will read, shall the city of Northampton be allowed to assess an additional $3 million in real estate and personal property taxes for the purposes of funding the operating budgets of the city and public schools for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2025, July 1, 2025. So that is actually fiscal year 2026. So uh, I'm going to ask the mayor to uh, uh, introduce uh, the order. And mayor, I know that you've explained this in previous meetings, but just so it'll be on the record for this meeting, if you could particularly address the timing of the override and, and the amount of the override, please. Thank you. Sure. Good evening, afternoon, counselors. Um, so using additional one-time reserves from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund in the school budget in FY25, and then committing those funds to be included in the base of the school's budget next year and then onward. Um, so essentially rolling these additional funds into the school budget permanently requires a $3 million Prop 2.5 general fund override to raise that additional revenue um, and have it last at least for four years. Um, otherwise, the deficit will be even larger than it is now going forward. <laughs> so with the amended budget that was presented um, by using, uh, with the amended budget that was presented a couple of weeks ago, by using the additional 
fiscal stability stabilization funds for the Northampton Public Schools budget. So now it's up to about $2 million of funds that are used from that fund um, to keep the override to $3 million that will and make it last for at least four years. We had to make additional cuts to other priorities. And in FY26, the school budget will need to keep within a 3% increase that hopefully can then build back up to a 4% in the following couple of years. Um, so by doing this, this reset will fold in this 8% increase um, to NPS this year, we'll fold it into their base and build all school increases on that base going forward. Um, so, and then the timing. So it's always, you always want to plan, a, you know, an override um, for a, for an election that's going to be a high turnout election. You want to get the maximum number of people to weigh in on this. So obviously it, have, it being a presidential year, um, having it during a presidential election will maximize the number of people who will come out and um, and voice their opinion on whether we should do a prop two and a half override. Um, it also will save the city money if we have to do a special uh, citywide election that costs you know thousands of dollars. Um, I I somewhere I think the last I asked somewhere around thirty thousand dollars <laughs> to. Um, that's what I feel like I've been told in the past was what a general uh, special election costs. So um, since we have elections coming up and uh, one that will be the highest turnout that we'll have in four years, it makes sense to tie it to that um, that presidential election. But as you said, or as the order says, it would be implemented in FY26, not for uh, not for the year that starts on July 1st. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, just to note, uh, the timing is consistent with at least the, the most recent past override, which was held on the uh, state uh, presidential primary election of 2020. So we try to get it. Uh, the, the goal has been to try to time it with, as the mayor said, an existing election and one that is likely to result in the highest turnout to let the voters decide on the override. Yeah. Councilors, uh, questions for the mayor? I'm trying to raise my hand at one there. You okay, go. uh Council Labarge. Yes. Um, Mayor, thank you for that information. I can't see you up there. But anyways, um, what you have just explained, I think it's extremely critical. If you could put that on that information on your website, city website, that would be very, very helpful because I do know. When I talked with the assessor, Mark, it's just too early, he said, to give even an estimate of what and how much more that that would cost as far as the override. And Chardine did tell me the same thing, too. We probably would have to look at year 2024 and try to make an estimate. I'm just saying because people are calling me on that. So I think that information, Mayor, that you have just presented is very, very helpful, very helpful. One sure. more question I have, Mayor. Say that this override does not pass. Where do we stand here? So if the override doesn't pass, then we would be looking at very significant cuts for FY26. I thought so. Yeah. So using this fiscal stability stabilization, this, this one-time money, um, will leave a, a deficit unless it is sort of backfilled with uh, more recurring revenue. Right. So we're looking right now at 20, what, 20 positions to cut. And if that override, because I think it's crucial, people understand the dangers involved here, that we're looking at cutting more than what we're looking at at 20 posi positions, correct? I mean, that would be up for, you know, the schools would have to figure that out, but it would be, if we don't pass this override, then um, this deficit is going to be significantly larger. Thank you so much. Sure. But I just want to be clear, the the override, as has been stated, would apply to, uh, the additional tax revenue would apply to FY26. So yeah. we would be talking about budget cuts if the if the override either is not held or if it doesn't pass the budget cuts would affect fy26 That's right. and i i 
I believe that they would be, extend beyond school department. They that that they may be budget cuts throughout municipal operations. Is that is that correct, Mayor? Sorry, it's very loud where I am right now. Um, uh, there would I mean it would be a, a very significant deficit, so we would have to figure out how to close that deficit. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, counselors? No. Councillor Elkins. Um, I would move that we forward it to council with a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on a positive recommendation on placing the override on the November 5th election ballot? No further discussion. Uh, Laura, would you call the roll, please? Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. That passes uh, unanimously, and we'll go to the City Council for consideration on Thursday, June 20th. That being our only business, a motion to adjourn is in order. Move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. We are adjourned at uh, 442. I will see uh, all of you later in the evening. Thank you very much.